back to Ions Health Talk. We had a quick break and today uh, we are discussing a really important subject. This is how to say goodbye to our loved ones who passed away because of uh, uh, a serious infection called COVID-19. And uh, we have our special guest, Dr. Ferros, who is here with us. We've been talking about, all, uh, uh, for the first part of the show, all about uh, uh, cremation. And uh, now we're going to talk, discuss more into the burial of the body. And actually we've been talking about uh, the different kinds of body bag we're using. You said in the UK they use kind of a single layer bag. Uh, shall we go back to the topic and quickly go through it? Sure. So um, with regards to the body bag, the requirement is the bug standard body bag. There isn't anything as a special body bags, which is coated with antibacterial or anything like that. The only requirement is it should be leak proof. It should be leak proof. Yeah. So so long as it's leak proof, the body would be put into the bo uh, body bag and they will be stored in the mortuary. Uh, I'm going to uh, stop you quickly and ask a, a, a more practical question. Yeah. Can this kind of body bags me, be made in uh, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, absolutely. India, countries like that, absolutely. in a normal factory where they make a plastic? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, so long right, as please. they are, so there should be certain thickness, of course, it does, shouldn't be really thin to tear off because it will defeat the purpose and it should be leak proof. This is the only thing. It doesn't matter where it's made how it's made, so long as it complies with those two standards. So it shouldn't be leaking. Yeah, from what I understood, yes. Uh, but however, certain countries, for example, Australia requires the body bags to be doubled or double layered, purely because they would like to exercise more precautions. But the important thing to notice is the purpose of the body bag is to contain the fluids which comes out of it, because fluids can contain the virus. Okay, uh, at this time I'm going to introduce uh, uh, an imam from a mosque in uh, called Finchley Masjid. He is the head of the imams of Islamic Center where they teach Islamic studies and uh, please welcome Imam Hamid on our show. Hello, Imam Hamid. Then we have small technical difficulty. We will be get we will get him back in a few seconds. Okay, let's go back. Oh yeah, he's back on the pro show. Uh, Imam Hamid, can you hear us? Yes, loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, welcome to our show. And Thank you very much today, for me. Imam Hamid, we are discussing about a special topic. This is all about COVID uh, patients who passed away or who, who left us behind and uh, how are we going to do their last rites, right? I'm going to jump into a, a, a question straightforward because we've been discussing about uh, cremation uh, because it looked like, it looked like uh, scientifically it's one of the, uh, the WHO guidelines you could cremate or you could bury the body but cremation cremation seems to be easy for certain countries and they promote cremation uh, what what is the perspective on uh, Islam uh, is, is Muslim religion does it allow cremation okay bismillah rahman rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyid al mursaleen sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in uh, so the, uh, it's important to, to note uh, before we uh, I sort of begin my answer, uh, just to send out some condolences to all those who have been affected uh, by the virus and that our du'as and our prayers are with those who have passed away and with those who are currently struggling uh, with the symptoms of the virus and for those families who are struggling with loved ones that have been affected by it also. Um, with regards to cremation in Islam, it is one of the rights uh, of every Muslim that uh, he has the necessary funerary rites uh, that are given to him uh, uh, at his death. Uh, this includes that he is washed, shrouded, uh, he is prayed over, and he is buried. Um, and this is one of the rites that every Muslim has upon another. Uh, and this is uh, considered what we call uh, in, uh, in Islamic law, in the Sharia, as fard al-kifaya, which basically means that it is absolutely uh, incumbent and obligatory and an obligation upon every upon a Muslim to carry out this right. 
And if a group of Muslims from the Muslim Ummah is to carry out that right, then that right is fulfilled for all of the Muslims collectively. But if, however, that right is not carried out by the Muslims, then they are all together collectively in sin for not fulfilling that right for the deceased. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ has spoken about the deceased with regards to harming uh, a, uh, a sort of a, a body once it's passed away. Um, uh, as the the ill effects and the harms that are caused to a dead body are the same as the harms that are caused to a person who is alive. So he said with regards to a person breaking bones of a, a dead body, that breaking his bones in death is like breaking his bones in life. So the harm that we enact uh, on a, a deceased person is very much equivalent to the harm that we enact on him if they were alive. Uh, we have to remember that there is Can a... Can I ask a quick, a short question for yeah, our sure. public to understand? Is cremation allowed in Islam? Yeah, so that, that's the, uh, the, the, the path that I'm getting to, inshallah. Yeah. What I want to establish first is that um, uh, what, uh, what is actually a, an obligation in Islam, which is to bury and the rights that are related to that. Now, if that is the obligation in Islam, which is to bury, then the opposite of which... Uh, includes uh, cremation uh, and the like is uh, uh, in reality uh, not permissible um, and uh, there isn't there isn't a scope for it uh, in the uh, in the religion of, religion of Islam one could argue though that there is nothing specific uh, in the deen uh, whether it's in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam to prohibit cremation so there's no ayah in the Quran where Allah says that cremation is haram. Nor is there a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that says cremation is haram. But okay. when we have uh, an obligation that is already set out for us with regards to burial and reg with regards to funerary rites, that takes precedence over the need and the requirement for there being any textual evidence to show that okay. cremation Thank is Thank you. Can, can I clarify, is, that, uh, is it uh, burial is preferred, but Cremation, burial, if it is, is necessary yes. on scientific basis, it does not say it is haram or it is prohibited. Is that right? Yes, you could say uh, that um, we could we could uh, we could put that into into sort of more simplistic terms in the sense that the uh, burial is a an obligation, and that is the first and foremost the right that we uh, enact when a person passes away. Whose Whether obligation be... is to bury the body? Yes, absolutely. And whether that be from uh, the coronavirus or other than that, the first and foremost thing that we should consider is burial. Um, if that is uh, if that is not the case, and if that is uh, that we are unable to Imam do Imam Hamid, I'm just going to hold you uh, online yes. because we have a caller. I think he has an important question. Hello, yeah. welcome to the show. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, sir. What's your name? My name is Shafiqullah Alam. I like to talk English. Is it okay? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's an English program. Okay. I, 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 I like to say that is it, when we all human beings die, I'm Muslim, and when all human beings die, if they're going to heaven, they will come by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam exactly. She's going to welcome to the who parts on who when arriving in the heaven. Doesn't matter who she religion is there. Doesn't matter, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we'll go back to the uh, show, Dr. Uh, uh, Imam Hamid. Yes. So um, what, what I was mentioning was that uh, the, so if we can't uh, bear, uh, end up burying the deceased body for whatever reason, um, then uh, we have to have exhausted all of the uh, alternatives that are there with regards to burial. So if we are not able to bury the body naturally in its uh, normal state that we normally bury the body in, uh, if we are not able to use the um, the body bags that uh, Dr. Faroz, mashallah, was, was speaking about, uh, if we are not able to wait a, a certain period of time so that whatever ill effects uh, that may transfer to the living from the deceased uh, are, uh, are safely overcome. If yeah, that's what I'm going, to, I'm going to stress on here. I think yeah. what you're explaining is, as Dr. Feroz has explained to us, there are uh, four different categories on this uh, infectivity of this, these diseases. He said the category four, which is the most dangerous one, is kind of a blood-borne disease and like Ebola. I think 
probably a, a infection like that might fall uh, that might be favored for cremation than for a for a burial is that right uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that's correct. Even Ebola, it, so long as it's, uh, the body is packed properly, so yeah. because that's a special way of preparing the bodies in a coffin with zinc coating also, uh, it could be buried. It doesn't have to be cremated. So if that is the case for category four infectivity, which is the highest category, category three could be easily buried. There is no scientific reason whatsoever so those COVID-19 infected body so have to COVID be COVID-19 is the category cremated. 3 infection Correct. that can be buried easily. easily. So long as it's in a body bag okay. and the precautions were observed, you know, in terms of people who uses, uh, moves the body, have got their PPEs and they're handled correctly, then it should be buried with no scientific reason not to. It's uh, um, Imam Hamid. Are you still around with us? Uh, yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, yeah, uh, okay. I'm going to back. I'm going to come back to you with the next question. Um, let's say uh, now there are so many deaths happening around the world. Uh, some places, the state is arranging funerals for the people. If the state finds they can't finance so much on this uh, body bag and these these coffins and all these things. If the state prefers, or if the state says uh, we can fund only for cremation, uh, I don't know. It's, it's a different, difficult question. Yeah. Uh, what is your opinion on it? Uh, so, if if by sort of uh, government uh, sort of uh, imposition we have to uh, cremate a body and there is no alternative that they are giving us, then uh, we have a, a pretty difficult situation on our hands. Uh, but as long as there are alternatives, if the government doesn't want to fund um, or cannot fund uh, a, a certain a sort of uh, the burial rites and a cremation is the only thing that they can fund, then the, alhamdulillah, our Muslim community is very affluent uh, and we have uh, funds all over the place with regards to uh, uh, burials and burial rites and so on and so forth and funerary rites. Uh, and that could be tapped into as well as sadaqat uh, uh, to be sort of um, uh, channeled in order to uh, fund this sort of thing. Um, uh, 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 what I mean by that is uh, the sort of burial rights. Um, what, what really needs to happen though in this sort of situation is there needs to be a very, very clear communication between the Islamic institutions of various types in the UK and the British government uh, so that they are well aware of the, the duties and responsibilities that Muslim ha Muslims have towards each other and the, uh, the burial rights uh, that are inclusive in that. Now, I want to just point to a, um, a very, very uh, important document that has been written up by the British Board of uh, Scholars and Imams, the BBSI, uh, which is a very comprehensive document with, with regards to uh, the funeral rites. And inshallah, this should be uh, consulted uh, when the need arises. Uh, and if the need arises, Imam Hamid, uh, it's really uh, it's very useful um, what you are explaining us. We have uh, about a few more minutes left uh, in our show. We quickly sure. going to uh, we're going to hold you there. You can you can still you are still in the show. We're going to quickly ask a few more questions from uh, Dr. Ferros. It's all about the burials and uh, in burials. There's a there's a there's a thing going on with this uh, ground water contamination uh, with this COVID or infected burials. Uh, what is your explanation in short about this? Um, so the question was that, uh, is there a threat from these buried bodies of COVID-19 where the virus would escape uh, and it will go into the water reserves and then infect the uh, ecosystem? This was the question. But uh, so there are the WHO, World Health Organization, has laid out clear guidance as to how these bodies should be buried. There should, I think there's about 30 meter uh, distance from the, any any water reserves. Also, you know, I couldn't just go through that. We don't have the time for the whole whole uh, uh, conditions. But there are two things to kind of understand. So number one is the viability of the virus. If it comes out of the body, how long would it live? So that has to determine how long would it stay. The second thing is if these body bags, uh, the bodies are inside the body bag and it's sealed and it's leak proof, what are the chances of it leaking? So that's why I said the handling is very important. Uh, so long as the bodies are handled properly and buried properly, and you know, you know, you must have kind of known already. Normally, plastic can 
stay before disintegration from somewhere like 10 years to 1,000 so years. The, my next and question is, be, yeah. will the body inside will decay or will, the, will it be preserved in the plastic bag for no, years and years? No, as soon as the body dies, the decaying process starts straight away, so almost straight away. Even because if we have got, we got uh, uh, germs in the bowels and they got anorods in the body, they'll start to decay as soon as a person dies. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the decay will continue, but of course it will be significantly slower than when it's in raw soil, but, but the, the, it will Dr. not escape. Dr. Farrows and uh, Imam Hamid, uh, it, well, it, it, it was it's really interesting talk, but we are running out of time. We have only a few more seconds left. Um, uh, what I'm going to do, do, we're going to wrap up the show soon, and thank you guys, and it was really interesting, and it was uh, one of the best shows. Uh, yeah. And please uh, thank Dr. Feroz and Imam Hamid, and we might see you. We will see you soon on a similar program next time. Until then, uh, we're going to wrap up this show, and please be tuned next time. I'll see you in a similar program. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. And take bye. care. Thank you.